here we are. A month, boy, a month goes by really fast. <laughs> and uh, here we are again that, uh, you know, Lenny and Lisa's sitting around the table. We're sitting around the table virtually, all of us on on the Zoom here. Uh, but we're so glad to be with you all. Really enjoyed Lenny's prayer. And um, it's it's hard what our sister's going through. And uh, But it was funny, just before I, I came on today, uh, I was uh, out with my dad in his apartment and uh, he wanted me to play some songs and <laughs> I don't know why we just were picking some songs from YouTube and um, we were listening to uh, Gold City, uh, God's Building the Church. And of course the song isn't rightly divided, but you know, it's a pretty upbeat song. And the next one came on it was uh, the anchor holes and uh So for those that are going through trying times, just remember the anchor holds. Though the ship's battered and the sails are torn, our anchor is anchored to Christ the rock. So just for an encouragement, and uh, sometimes life looks pretty dark, and... Uh, We can get pretty low that we can hardly even pray, but we know that the anchor holds. So, anyways, just a little word of encouragement. So, we're going to continue our studies uh, about mysteries in the scripture. And um, I was thinking, like, last time we were together, we, we were thinking reminding ourselves that a mystery is not like a mystery like an Agatha Christie mystery or uh, you know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle mystery like Sherlock Holmes uh, a mystery in the scripture is something that uh, is hidden in God and then it's it it is revealed so I was thinking of uh, of us as a group of believers some of us are on the road for a short time uh many of us are on, on the road for a long time and you know some of us like myself <laughs> you know we look back over our christian walk and we go wow why didn't we see right division um sooner in our lives and i wish we had of uh you know i was thinking of our young joshua zach and how that you know, last year at the conference, he, he gave that beautiful outline of right division. And for a young man in his teen years to to know right division that early in life, it's a wonderful thing. Those of us who, you know, took a few years and took circumstances in our lives to bring us to this point, uh, that's also wonderful. So, but, it, you know, it's not long after I was talking to a young man this week, and I've talked to my my friends my former acts two friends and it's not long after you you tell another bible student about paul's uh, message the distinctive message of the mystery of christ uh you're going to be throwing a few verses uh so let let's read romans 16 25 again and uh, let's read it together uh, Lenny exhorted me uh, on Monday to uh, him and I were having a little discussion. We should take the time and read the verses. So let's let's read Romans 16, 25. Now to him that has of the power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So I want to think of these two words, first of all, mystery and secret. So like I was saying, it's not long until you tell your 
you know, your Bible student friends that you've grown up with or uh, have been in contact with over the years, they're going to run to their concordance strongs or they're going to run to blue letter Bible and they're going to look up the word mystery and they're going to look up the word secrets and then they're going to come back and say, whoa, hold on. There's word is used not just in Paul's epistles, but it's used somewhere else. So I want to help us, first of all, to edify one another. Uh, that's our purpose here this evening, uh, to get into the Word of God, to understand it, but also to be prepared so that when someone does challenge us uh, and ask us uh, about these things, that we can give them an answer, not in a smart, uh, aloof way, uh, but in a in a way that you know we want to help them understand the scripture and have a deeper understanding of what God is saying to them. And you know, as we all look back on our own journey, uh, that's what we needed. We needed someone to sit down and to help us, just like you know, the Ethiopian eunuch. How can I understand unless? someone shows me so we need the the pathfinders who have gone before us uh and we stand on their shoulders and we you know keep going with the message and the understanding so let's uh let's first of all look at uh, Deut uh deuteronomy chapter 29 Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But, you know, <laughs> we as right dividers, we, you know, we love the but now, right? So here's a but in, in Israel's uh, journey. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. And to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So I wanted to think of of uh, the secret things. So you know, somebody will come to us and say, "Well, you see, there's secrets that were revealed." Well, you know, we can have we can have the same word. So the secret here in Deuteronomy is not the same secret that Paul is talking about in Romans 16.25. So we look at the words. So, uh, you know, Blue Letter Bible is great. I use it a lot. It, it's, it's a great study tool. Elizabeth and I, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, she sits there with it on her phone and <laughs> she's ready to give me verses and stuff. But, you know, think of it this way. Um, you know that in my, in my, working life before I got cancer, uh, I was a piano technician. So if I said to you, uh, if I said to you, look at that key, well, what would you think? You would think, oh, he's talking about a key that goes into the lock of my door or my padlock. But if I said to you, 88 keys, well, right then, it, same word, keys, right? But now you have an image of a piano, or you should <laughs> have an image of a piano in front of you. If uh, if we look at other other words like that, like a nail, you take the word nail. Well, if I show you a hammer, the first thing you're going to think of is a two inch steel nail. But you know, if I you see a pair of scissors and I say nail, you're going to think. Oh, I got to clip the nails on my dog or cat if you're brave enough. But, you know, uh, so words mean things, but words mean things in context. And that's one thing about right division uh, that is, is so helpful is that you look at the word of God in context. Uh, Eric and I were talking uh, earlier, we were just saying about the parables, for instance, you know, uh, and and what the Lord Jesus Christ spoke and some of the words that he spoke in the Gospels. You know, he came 
unto his own and his own received or not. Well, that's that's not us. That's the Jews, right? Uh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Wow. You know, we we use that as a gospel versus at least in the circles that I was in. And that was, you know, a, a verse that you really preached on. But what lost was he searching for? He was searching for the lost uh, sheep of the house of Israel, not the Gentiles. So words mean things. So when we come to this in Deuteronomy, we see the secret things belong unto the Lord. But so they belong to him. God has every right to keep things hidden and to keep things secret at his discretion. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. So let's go back to uh, Exodus 19, for instance. Exodus 19, verse 5. How's my time? When did I start? Okay. Now, there, sorry, Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, and for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou, thou, thou shalt speak. And then there's a qualifier, isn't it? Unto the children of Israel. So this was something that God had kept secret to himself. When Abraham was called, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then we see that uh, Israel, my son, was called out of Egypt. And we... And, so he brings them out and he reveals this to them, to them, that through them would be a channel of blessing for all the earth and that they would be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Right? So that was a secret that God held within himself. And then he now he reveals it a little bit at a time. Then we think of how that Israel was given the law. And we know that they were given, what, about 613? I guess somebody's counted them for us, so we just use that number. Uh, so I trust whoever that was who gave us that number. 613 points of law. That was not known. God had that in his mind and his heart, and he revealed it. It was a secret, and then it was revealed. So what we're trying to say is it's the same words that, are used the secret but different contexts right so so when we come to the bible and it's a mystery in the bible that is unknown to most people in christendom today right when we talk about the mystery that we read about in romans 16 25 uh so there's 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 one way to look at it. Uh, some will say that uh, the understanding of the Bible is is you know you need to be a genius, need to be a code breaker. You need to no no. Here we are, a group of people sitting on a Saturday night, and we have more understanding of the Scripture, I believe. And I don't say this in an arrogant or pompous way, but as my dear brother Eric always says, those in the cemetery school uh, don't have as much understanding as we have. And, you know, the grace of God is wonderful that we understand this. God has not, re God, if God has not revealed his mysteries uh, and they're not for us to know, the Bible, sorry, I wrote, I wrote a, this down I'm, my handwriting is a little weird this is the point i want to make the bible is not a book of riddles but it's a book of revelations so when you come to the last book of the bible what is it what is the title it's the revelation of jesus christ 
you know, many of us say, and I've said that before, revelations, right? But that it's actually the revelation of who? Of Jesus Christ. When we talk about when we talk about Jesus Christ according to prophecy, that was something that was uh, from the earth, uh, from the beginning of the earth, right? So we understand that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ preached in uh, in um, in the prophecy program was according to what God had revealed. So you come to Isaiah. And we have another secret, a revelation. For unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given. Now that's revealed when you come to Psalm 22. And you hear those words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? Or Psalm 69, I sink in deep mire where there's no under, uh, no standing. I mean, this is looking forward to a time when the Lord Jesus Christ would be lifted up uh, and that he would suffer. Uh, we learned from the Psalms that, you know, uh, was it Psalm 118, you know, bind the sacrifice to the altar. Looking forward to that time when Christ would have to be sacrificed. Then we have a further revelation. Let's go to uh, John 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the gospel that, you know, when, when we're first saved as young people, <laughs> and they, you know, everybody's so happy for you, and at least in my case, you know, everybody's happy at the church, right? And they come to you and they go, read the book of John. Read the book. Of, that's, boy, I wish they had told me to read the book. Uh, Romans, that would have been a lot more beneficial. I mean, John is a great book. I mean, we learn things about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this is the fourth gospel bringing before us the deity of Christ and so on. But uh, anyways, let's just look at uh, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now in John, in, in, in uh, in Genesis 1 and 1, we read these words. We read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, look at verse 3. This is amazing. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. We see a secret here, don't we? We see that Christ, and by the way, if you read other versions, we won't get into the version issue, but they will say all things are made through him. But in our King James Bible, it says all things were made by him. So we see a further revelation of, of, what, uh, uh, of things in the scripture. So another verse you could share with a friend. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. And again, Hebrews, a wonderful, wonderful epistle. <laughs> but, you know, for 45 years, I never read, you know, who it was written to. It was written to the Hebrews, right? <laughs> So right there, that gives you a little, a little, uh, a little information what we should understand. So God, God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Oh, that's interesting. By whom he also made the worlds. Sounds much like the opening of John. But here we, you can take this verse and you can, you know, if somebody challenges you on the mysteries, uh, you say, well, first of all, 
let's look at the context. Uh, God spake, right? Uh, how did he speak? And to whom? And about what? So he spoke in sundry times. You know, that that is that for us as Bible believers, that's very important because people like, uh, let's say, the Latter day Saints uh, or Muslims, um, you know, they were given this monolithic book given to them by these leaders. I use that loosely. Uh, but God has spoken multiple times. Uh, sundry, uh, you remember, I don't know, if down in the States, but up in Canada, you know, you would see on the little corner stores, you know, cards and that, and, and sundries, like different things. They had all kinds of little different things in the general store, right? So it means he spoke in many different ways. So we know that angels were involved in Israel's program, right? Verse 4 tells us that he was made so much better than the angels. Uh, we see that the speaking was in sundry times, but in diverse manners. He spoke at times through with, with Moses. He spoke in an audible voice, right? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He spoke in visions. He spoke in dreams. Look at Daniel, right? <laughs> Even donkeys. So that's the way God spoke in time past. So right there, you can say to your Acts 2 believing friend or your Pentecostal friend, well, it was different ways that he spoke. Uh, he, in different ways, he spoke to, he, to teach, to uh, a word of mercy, you know, it repented God. He, he turned back from what the evil he had, he was going to do, the judgment. He sometimes spoke in wrath, uh, but he spoke in diverse manners. And then it says, in time past, uh, how does God speak now? Do we have dreams? Do we hear audible voices? No. And that's what we're going to find out, that Paul, in the revelation of the mysteries that were given to him, that it is complete. God has said everything he needs to say, but in time past, he had to speak and say things and reveal so this is a term that most in christendom don't like but we have to understand progressive revelation if we don't understand progressive revelation we're going to get stuck and we're going to be stuck in the gospels or we're going to be stuck in the old testament or we're going to be stuck under the law right so god has spoken in diverse times uh, in in um sorry in time past uh in diverse manners and he spake unto who who was the audience it says unto the fathers and how by the prophets so <laughs> right there that we know we're excluded from that right because uh i'm just going to flip over to a verse in I hope I can find it because I didn't write it down. Um, yeah, okay. Keep your finger in, in Hebrews 1. Let's just zip over to uh, Romans 3. Romans 3. What advantage then had the Jew? Or what profit is there in circumcision? Very much, every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So Israel was spoken to. Israel in time past was spoken to by the prophets, by the word of God. Now, verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. 
Well, I'm telling you, I don't know how many times as a young Christian and a more mature Christian that I preach from this verse. And, you know, you, you can really get a good gospel message, you know, going, you know, God spoke to us and his final statement is made by his son. Well, let's go to Acts 2. So verse 16, uh, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, God is speaking to them from the perspective of, of, of a prophet, right? He's not speaking to Gentiles as a prophet from, from the prophets, from the point of view of the prophets. God spoke to Israel by his son. And the last days that they were looking forward to was the final days of Daniel's 70th week. And we see there that uh, they were being prepared, as we'll see as, as if we studied Hebrews, that they would be ready to go through the tribulation. But God has spoken after that. And this is something that, you know, is hidden in plain sight. The mystery, you know, it's wonderful the way God works. The mystery is hidden in plain sight. But let's, let's now go to another, another, um, now's my time. What time should I finish? 10 minutes, okay. So, so we read De Deuteronomy 29, 29. I got to keep to my, my list here. Uh, but let's go to um, uh, let's go to, to Matthew 13. This, this, is, this is where you will get like some pushback, right? So people in Christendom who read their Bible, you know, they'll link up Hebrews 1. God has spoken to us in his son in these last days. And truly, and they'll say to you, truly, this is the last days, right? So let's look at uh, Matthew 13. Uh, let's, uh, verse 10 for connection. And the disciples came and said unto him, the Lord Jesus, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because... It is given unto you to know the mysteries. Wow. Well, hold it. Hold it. I thought we was right. The virus said the mysteries were revealed to Paul. And here's a mystery here. So how do we deal with this? So let's just take a few minutes and we'll figure out how to deal with this. That if you will be prepared and ready to give uh, any man an answer or woman. Uh, women and men, the one excludingly, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, so there's a qualifier to this mystery, but to them it is not given. So who's the them? What what's going on here? Verse thirteen. Therefore I speak I speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. So, I, this has been a great help to me it, coming out of, uh, you know, uh, Acts 2 dispensational background. When you read the Gospels, the Lord is speaking to basically three groups of people. He's speaking to the multitudes. He's speaking to his own disciples. Or he's addressing the Pharisees. And in only two occasions, he's he addressed the Syrophoenician woman and a Samaritan woman, and the third, the centurion, right? So it's very important to see that because they seeing, see not, and hearing, hear not. Now, 
this statement is kind of transdispensational, if you want to use that term. Uh, in other words, human nature is the same throughout all history, right? So here's the Lord Jesus Christ, man, God manifest in the flesh, came unto his own. In Acts, uh, John 1, we read that the word was made flesh and dwelt among them. It wasn't like he just appeared. He dwelt among them for three years. He taught them and preached to them. But we see there's a turning point when, when uh, the leadership of Israel attributes the, the, uh, what he was doing and, and doing the miracles and that they attributed it to Beelzebub. We see that the Lord turns. Now, uh, if you read Eric's books uh, on the Gospels, and you understand that, you know, in our, in our background, and probably your background too, that when you came to the parables, you know, you were told, you know, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And I remember in a Bible study one, one day, I was in my mid-20s, and one of the elders said, so what is a parable? And I gave that definition. He said, very good, Ernie. And I'm going like, I'm thinking back now. Wow, what a mistake, <laughs> right? Because a parable actually was to hide what he was preaching uh, to those that uh, didn't believe. Uh, so... Uh, let, let's go over to Mark chapter 4 and verse 11. Mark 4, verse 11. Uh, verse, you know, I always wonder why teachers do this. You know, okay, yeah, sorry, need verse 10 for connection. And when he was alone, they that were uh, about him with the 12 asked him of the parable, uh, asked him the parable. And he said unto them, unto you. It is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, seeing that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. Uh, Verse 20, verse 34, uh, verse 33. And with many such parables, he spake the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things unto his disciples. So these things were hidden from unbelievers. And, you know, it's kind of human nature today when you. Uh, I have a very dear friend and, you know, we spent, you know, 15 years together or so in, in this assembly. And, you know, I was so excited to tell him that I, I, I have the, the, the solution to many of the contradictions in the scripture and in Hebrews and in the gospels, you know, that Christ gave his life a ransom for many. But then Paul tells us he died for all. So, and as try as I might, uh, he will he will not see it. And you know that's I'm just just I'm making an application now. Uh, as it was in the Lord's day, there was those who just would not see uh, what he was speaking, and even his own disciples. I mean, think of uh, Peter and when he was telling them why he must go to Jerusalem and not so Lord, and you know, they loved them so much. Uh, they didn't want him to leave. I'd imagine we'd feel the same way, but you know, he had to do that because we read in, in Romans three, that God had to have a just way to forgive sins. And that was through uh, his son. So if you're so these are the mysteries of the kingdom that were slowly being revealed to the believers, the disciples. And you'll remember that uh, it tells us that it would be given, uh, taken from them and given to a nation. 
And that's important because uh, Okay, I just, I just can't find the verse, but I know it's in the gospel. But it's important for us as right dividers to understand that uh, in the Lord Jesus' time, that he was not going around preaching to the Gentiles and calling all people to repentance and, you know, a big gospel outrage. He came unto his own. So in Matthew 21, uh, we read, uh, this yeah let's turn to it matthew 21 verse 43 matthew 21 verse 43 therefore i say unto you the kingdom of god shall be taken from you that's unbelieving israel and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof so faithful israel israel's remnant so and you notice there's no s right there's no s on nation so it's not taken from the nation of Israel and given to the nations, right? It's taken from the unbelieving nation part of Israel and given to the believing part of Israel, the nation. Uh, I just wanted to link something up. Just, I guess I should be wrapping up to give Lenny time. But let's just go to uh, First Peter since we're just talking about this. First Peter two, uh, verse nine. Now I don't know. Maybe some of you weren't exposed to this uh, in, wherever you went to church or in Christendom, uh, but you know we were told and taught, and uh, I wore it proudly that I was uh, part of a holy priesthood, and that uh, I had access, and you know we can speak to others on behalf of christ and so on but look what the verse says remember we read in exodus 19 right verse 5 and 6 look at verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but now are people of God. That's not the church. That's the believing part of Israel. Sorry, I shouldn't hit the thing. Uh, which had not obtained mercy, but now obtained mercy. <laughs> because if it was us, why in verse 12, he would say, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. So right there, it gives you a, you know, a, little, a little insight. Uh, and of course, verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, is strangers scattered. So uh, Gentiles aren't scattered, right? Okay, uh, I got to wrap up. Uh, so the point, so what we've learned tonight is, first of all, God kept secrets. God revealed secrets. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. It is up to God whether he wants to reveal a secret or keep a secret. And we see that there were secrets that were revealed regarding the kingdom of God, the mysteries for the believing nation of Israel. So if somebody asks you, you can say, okay, you know, in your head, you go, okay, I know how to answer this now. Those were the mysteries of the kingdom. That was the qualifier of the kingdom, right? So let's, let's close with this first. Boy, I didn't get as far as I... <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, well, we can carry on the next time. But let's just go back to verse 25 again of, of Romans 16. And then I'm going to wrap it up, Lenny. Uh, now to him that is of the power to establish you. I love that, establish, right? Because, I mean, before, you know, when you don't have a King James, you go like establish. No, you were established at the beginning, and now we're just putting the final establishment uh, okay sorry power to establish you according to my gospel okay we didn't get to that but we're gonna study that later but the mystery of christ now i want to really really hammer this home according to the revelation of the mystery oh i missed something didn't i 
and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. You know, and I'm I'm guilty of this. And, you know, and you get going, you go, yeah, the mystery. You know, we preach the mystery. Uh, we preach the mystery of Paul. And, you know, and, and then you get pushed back and they say to you, oh, well, you're worshiping Paul. Oh, you're making Paul more important. You know, and, you know, if we, if we use our language carefully, and I think we really have to keep this in mind, that it's the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about what he did at Calvary. I mean, when Paul talks about Christ, he says, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says, for me to live is Christ, right? And we're going to learn in the coming weeks about this mystery of Christ in us. But let's just be careful when we're trying to help others to understand the mysteries that were given to Paul, that it's the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. They preach Christ according to prophecy. And when Peter stood up and he preached that day, you men of Israel and all that uh, hearken unto my word, Jesus Christ, this one whom you crucified by wicked hands have taken and crucified and slain. He's risen again. That was their message. And that revelation that was given to them, the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. And Peter could stand in Acts 2 and preach that with all the vim and vigor. But he preached Christ out of condemnation and indictment to Israel. But when we come to Paul, he's preaching my gospel. He's preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation that was given to him. And he says in verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 1, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. This is what Paul is preaching. Verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 1, he says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews at a stumbling block. They stumbled over Christ. And we're going to learn that in, in Romans 11. And unto the Greeks, it was foolishness that a man died is going to save me. But here he preaches uh, in verse 2 of chapter 2. He says, for I determined to, not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So many things happened at the cross, but Paul tells us what happened by the cross. And we have this message <laughs> to give to others, this mystery, this gospel, as Paul puts it so beautifully. He says, according to my gospel. And he doesn't say, you know, I had a brother say to me, oh, he, he was conceited, saying it was my gospel. No, 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 dear brother, no. It's according to my gospel that was revealed unto the Apostle Paul, this one who was arrested on the Damascus Road. And the preaching of Jesus Christ is according to the revelation of this mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, hidden in God. And how privileged we are, we're going to learn in the weeks to come, that we are stewards of the mystery. We have this message. And we're ambassadors to go and give this message, first of all, to see those saved. But my heart is to edify, to help believers to come into the knowledge, this wonderful knowledge of the mysteries that were revealed to our apostle, the apostle Paul. So we'll leave it there for this time. And uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, I'll turn it over to our dear brother, Lenny.
Oh. Okay, then. You undid it? Yeah. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, you, you stole all my thunder, so I don't have to teach. You pretty much got everything done for me. <laughs> Thank you, Ernie. That was wonderful. Yeah. That was um, great. That was great. You need a break, Ernie, and come back? Oh, you're good to go. Uh oh. Last night, John Crustacean talking about the secrets, oh, the table and all. Yeah. And now, today. now again today, I know. <laughs> yep, that was real good. You good, Ernie? No, yeah, I'm right. now. I'll fix it. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah, Lenny, you can talk on things tonight. <laughs> That's next time, Ernie. <laughs> 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 oh, <God>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Miss Marley. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Anybody need to take a bathroom break? <laughs> Go poke that friend in the side. Well, Annie, uh, tell Ernie to, to give you the verses he didn't even be able to get to. I know, I know. <laughs> while, while, uh, while we're taking a bathroom break, if you got a pen, this is just kind of fun. If you got a pen, write down EAT. 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 It's not a trick. I'm just going to say, don't start. That says eat. Oh, wait, that's the last part. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's got EAT written down? Okay, this is a uh, lesson on context. What? Context. 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 Yeah, I already brought up context. Context, context, context. Yeah. All right, on, on three, everybody say EAT. One, two, three. E-A-T. No. <laughs> Say the word E-A-T. One, two, three. E -A -T. Okay. Put S-W in front of E-A-T. Sweet. Sweat. Sweat. It's what I've been doing all afternoon in the yard. <laughs> Y'all are tough yeah. too. Okay. On three, say W. S W E A T. Sweat. Sweat. Oh. So it went from E, e to, to X. Y. Oh. Context. Context. A simple little grammatic, not grammar, a little English word where you look at it that quickly, and everybody here was able to do it. Went E to sweat. Well, oh, guess what, you. boys and girls? Your holy Bible, the word of God, is the same way. We can look at something and say, it's for us. Mm -hmm. We can look for something to say it's for Israel. Right. It's the same God. Yeah. It's the same love of God. But one's eat, one's sweat. So. Real simple, little three-letter word, five-letter word. Y'all all knew you went from eat to sweat. So we're going to go, the context now is to go to faith. What pleases God is faith. So we're going to go to Hebrews. And most of y'all know, Gail, probably the, the church entity, and it's okay, calls it the faith chapter, okay. chapter 11. We're going to read a little bit about faith. So when you hear the word contact, you go, oh, I never do that. Yeah, you do. All the time. So don't treat your scriptures any differently. Don't treat your scriptures any differently. All right, Gail, what chapter is it? 11. 11. As I spent a little time and shared with Brother Ernie earlier this week, there's some really cool stuff in chat. Of course, that you know, this cool stuff. <laughs> you know, just open it up and go, oh, okay. 
So, first word, now. Ooh, interesting. Not back then, not in the future, now. Faith is the substance, substance in this, in this made of a substance, I'm made of a substance. We think of a substance as being something we can touch, we can see, you know, we can have some substance called chili in a little while ago. We've, we've had some great snacks, some substances that taste good. The substance of things hoped for. Hmm. So that has to be come from between your ears. It has to be some thought of things hoped for. That's not a substance we can touch, see, feel, smell, absorb. Very good. A mental thing between your ears. Now, here, here's something real interesting. The evidence, of course, they went into... Trump's house this week and try to get some evidence, right? Yeah. Evidence of things not seen. Wow, that sounds almost like a what you call an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. The evidence of something not seen below scumbag. I mean, those FBI agents were looking for something to see, to indict, to impugn Mr. Trump. But it says the evidence of things not seen. So already we 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 I think we're talking about something between your ears. Mm -hmm. You know, faith is between your ears. Now, if we go to the next verse, as Brother Ernie pointed out, for by the elders obtained now the elders, that is the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. That's the Hebrew, that is not Gentile. And the more I'm studying this, the last six, eight, ten months, we ain't Jews. And it's real clear we're not. And they weren't Gentile. And it's real clear they weren't. Now, we, we know, as Ernie just brought up, there are three scriptures where Jesus of Nazareth loved on a Gentile and healed him and did what he needed to do. Because those Gentiles knew where they fit in the program of God. They understood if they blessed Israel, they could get blessed by God. Verse 3 has an interesting word, Stan, understand. So verse 1 was a little bit rough to understand from, for me. But through faith, we understand. That's a good word that the words were framed, the world, excuse me, the world were framed by the word of God. Whoa, he's a pretty powerful guy. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. So they will appear. Which do appear. Yes, which do appear. So we can now understand so we're going to go through rather quickly some, some gentlemen, and I think there's a couple of ladies here. Uh, verse four, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Wow. So, so Abel, through faith, became righteous i think that's what it says yeah doesn't say anything about going to church tithing obeying the law i think it says by faith god testifying of his gifts and by that and by it he being dead yet speaketh verse five by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had his testimony that it pleased God. Young man at 
Patty's life a month ago, six weeks ago, went to be with the Lord. He had a testimony and his testimony of faith pleased God. So he's with our understanding. He's with God right now. All right. Verse six is a good verse. We all know. But without faith, is it, impossible, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I think our dear brother Ernie has diligently sought him for a long time. I've gotten to know this gentleman, y'all. Lisa and I spent some time with his wife and himself. And this man has diligently sought the Lord for 40 or 50 years. He is passionate about God. But the last six years, the right division has opened many a doors. Opened many a doors. And as you can see, he's excited about it. But we have to seek him. Number seven, verse seven, by faith, Noah being warned, and that's something, warned of God of things yet, uh, things not yet as seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Thank you, Gail. Again, again. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Wow. So by faith, he wandered in the wilderness. I'm going to skip down to verse 11, everybody. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. That would have been who made the promise, Gail? Who made the promise? God. God did. Amen. Very good. Skip down to 17, everybody. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son because he believed in the resurrection. Yes. 17. 17. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, J uh, 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both his sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Wow. 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Verse 26 is something kind of new to me, so bear with me. Listen to what Moses did. Moses, 
esteeming the reproach of Christ. Christ wasn't around when Moses was around. Greater riches in the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Wow. 27, by faith he fortook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 28, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a, a saying to do, were drowned. Thirty. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compa compassed about seven days. Isn't it say by faith? Isn't that interesting? It said by faith the walls fell down. <laughs> it said they knocked them down. They fell down. Wow. Yeah, flat. By faith the har 31, I'm sorry, verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Now, what makes Rahab, besides being a lady, different than all, well, not Abraham, but Rahab would have been the only Gentile? Yeah, she was a Gentile. But what saved her? Faith. He believed. Very good. Very good. Now, Ernie has done a great job, in my opinion, last couple of times. Speaking on the mystery, none of these ladies and gentlemen knew the mystery. It was hidden God, but they still had faith. It was going on at that time. Now in their life was their time to have faith, and they did. They did. Now, as Ernie pointed out a little while ago, it's on the ink in on the pages if we want to read it and we want to believe it it's there to be revealed to us if we want to study it out and get some understanding i love listening to the gentleman that we listen to i love listening to karen allen <laughs> What I learn the most is when I do it on my own. Because as Ernie was saying, I took <laughs> back to verse one. I'm, I'm going to take a little side note here. Now faith is the substance of thing. Back to 11.1, uh, 11, everybody. Sorry. Back to uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of, what's the next word? Thing. Hmm. Hope for the evidence of next word is things. thing. So I spent a couple of hours the other day looking up things. things. <laughs> Apparently there's and there's there's uh, I got them all uh, I got them here somewhere. <laughs> no, they're here. Well, this is just holy things. <laughs> uh -huh. Holy things. Because in Luke. Uh, in Luke, Jesus is called a uh, holy thing. Oh, yeah. In Luke, he's called when when the baby's in Mary's womb. He's called a holy thing. It's like thing, thing. So, so uh, yeah. Maybe next time we'll do a little thing on things. <laughs> it was quite interesting, y'all. Quite in. Okay, so. These wonderful saints of God were honored for their faith. Oh, salute. I'm going to use the word salute. Salute. Is that okay, Wayne? Salute. We're going to salute these people for their faith. Okay?
Now, Ernie, thanks again. Everybody go back to Romans 3. <laughs> Going to salute them for their faith. Okay. So these people had a wonderful advantage because they had faith. They had faith. So in Romans 3, we're going to read about some advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to read about faith. Chapter 3 of Romans. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what prophet is there of circumcision? Now, was circumcision done in faith? Yeah. 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 But according to now, there is how much profit in circumcision? None. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Was that the Gentiles? No. No, it, it, it. I mean, the more I'm, I'm just spending time. There's Jew, and there's Gentile, and there's the body of Christ. <laughs> yeah. But what if some did not believe? I'm, I'm on verse three, y'all. I'm sorry. But what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Here's a new faith. Who's this faith of now? God. Whoa. God has faith? Yeah. Very good. God has faith? Yeah. Oh, let's find out. What do you think, Scotty? Well, Say again? Very good. Very good. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Very good, Scotty. I think that's the right answer. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judge. But if our unrighteous commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous? Who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world for the truth of god hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory why yet am i also judged as a sinner and not rather as we be slanderous reported as some affirm that we say let us do evil that good may come whose damnation is just now he's being sarcastic right there all right ego miss gail verse nine what then? Are we better than they? Who's he talking about? Jews and Gentiles. It don't go away, folks. It's still there. There's, you know, in the scripture, there's still Jews and Gentiles, or you're in the body of Christ. Then there is no Jew or Gentile. All on even ground. In no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they're all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. Uh-oh. So that includes who now? The Jews. The Jews are, uh, yeah, all of them except the little flock. So very few. Either that or God's a liar. I don't think he is. They're unprofitable. They were supposed to bless the yeah. nations. That's who the Jews were supposed to. And they will. Are they doing that now? No. no. But they don't even exist now. <laughs> so they're, they're scattered. So they're, they're not blessing anybody. There is none that does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit, and the poison of asp is under their lips. 
whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 19. Now we know. You know, there's a bunch of places in the scripture where it says you should or you should know knowledge. We should know that what things soever the law saith, it says it to them who are under the law. That would have been who? The Jews. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may be guilty before God. How many of them? All, every. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. What does religion tell you? Follow the law. Let's give you a few. That's not what the scripture says. By the law is the knowledge of sin. All right. Connie, we're going to get some good news now. Amen. All right, Miss Denise, we're going to get to the good news because most of that wasn't good news. But now, woo, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, watch this, everybody, which is by the faith of Moses. Rahab. No, not Rahab. No. no. By the faith of Billy Graham. No. Who's that, Connie? Close. I'm close. <laughs> All right. So the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto wow, Jew or Gentile. And upon Jew or Gentile, them that believe, for there is no difference. So that place over there in the map, I mean, it says Israel, but it's not God's Israel. It will be, though. It will be. Very good, Connie. Um, for all, very good. It's coming. And it's going to be glorious, won't it? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right. All right, Gail, you ready? Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what do you got to do to pay for it? Nothing. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Is God still forbearing with Israel? Oh, is he? He set him aside, but he's going to bring him back. So in yeah, that was a kind of a trick. He he is actually, but he did set him aside. They standing in the corner. Very good. It's his way of saying very, he is forbearing. We very good. We are the ones when we go poof and leave out of this messy place. Hopefully, no, not hope. It will. There will be some Israelis, if I understand the scripture correctly. You can correct me. Are going to go? Where those guys go? Let me let me look. Yeah, that's what they're going to say. That'll be their sign. Be their sign. I think we better put some faith in the book. So he is still forbearing with them, but he is punishing them. Uh, well, that's okay. Correcting them. Thank you, Gail. Not allowed to punish right, right. <laughs> All right, here we go. To declare, I say, at this time. Now, this was written 
two thousand years ago, but is it still at this time? Yes. Yes. His righteousness that he might be just. So is he just? Mm -hmm. And the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. So 26, verse 26, Scotty. Okay. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, he is just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting? Now, who's he talking to again? Talking to Lanny, I like to boast. Where's boasting? It is excluded. By what law? None. Of works? None. Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that I'm going to count to three, everybody, and everybody say their name. Just say your name. Not trying to trick anybody. I'm going to say Lenny, okay? <laughs> One, two, three. Is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Put your name right there if you want to. Is what what tense is that? Now. Okay, Paul and the Holy Spirit are gonna wrap it up. Next three verses. He's gonna put a ribbon around it. Is he the God of the Jews only? There's the question. No. no. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yeah. Which means we can approach God the same way by simple faith. We don't have to go to Israel to be blessed. We don't have to do the Mosaic law. It is simple faith. Recognize you're a sinner. Accept Jesus Christ. I like to say life, death, burial, and resurrection. That's just Lenny. I like to say life. And put my faith in that for my eternal salvation. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Now here we go, everybody. We're going to wrap it up. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So the law is the law of faith. Very simple. Very simple. Okay. That's the end of that tune. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to eat and sweat. What is this talking about that the law was given to the believing Israelites? and all that, they are Messianic Jews believing Israelites. Today is called Messianic Jews, correct? Not by God. No, no, sir. <laughs> Not by God. Okay, but well, they're believing Jews. They're in the body of Christ. Well, okay, but I've noticed that there's a lot of them that I've seen in different places that still observe the the customs and the yeah and all of the Jews are they are they living under the law or are they living under the they have made they have made Christ of no effect. He said it they're they're living, living under confusion. Confusion, very good. They're, they're made up. They're made up group of believers. Yeah. Okay. I'm not and saying it, they're not believers, but they're very confused. Okay, because it seems like a um, 
Each of their contradiction there between the way they're doing and what they say they believe. There is a contradiction. Yes, yeah. very good, dear. And they, they're uh, what, what did uh, we went through this other day? They're they're making Christ in them, the Christ that lived in them, if they have the fact you know did believe in these mm -hmm. Christ death prayer. They are making Christ in them of no effect. Mm -hmm. They're going back to the law to get their righteousness. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, um, look at verse 27. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're boasting. Look Custom. what we're doing. Huh? They're boasting in customs. Yeah. They're okay. boasting in, they're trying to follow the law, whatever it is, whether it's dietary law, whatever. They're, you you know about it because they let you know they're doing it. Yeah. All six okay, they're both well. <laughs> like you, they said, if you put one drop of the law, you spoil the whole thing. Yeah, they're boasting. Yeah. But they seem to enjoy observing the, uh, all the other yeah. stuff that is no longer to be done on no. the cross. It's, uh, it's a shadow of Jesus Christ. They're they're participating in the shadow and missing the reality of Christ. They're faking the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They read okay. the faith of it. They're acting it out. That's for the Jews to. Sure. That's sad because they've got an awful lot of people that be in Israel that are following that, thinking that a, a whole bunch. That sad. they don't have to give up anything <clears throat> to to be Christian. Oh, anyway, Bernie, you got something to say? Yeah, I just if you don't mind. Um, what yeah, because Elizabeth and I, a number of years ago, when when I was coming into Right Division. Um, you know, we were very intrigued by, because one of our friends are Jewish and they're a believer. And uh, this is why it's so important, I think, anyways, you know, take it or leave it, whatever. Uh, when you read John uh, 20, verse 31, and you read this verse, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you might have life through his name 30. sorry verse 31 yeah. uh, and so many times and i'm guilty of this i would preach from this verse on a sunday night a gospel message <laughs> and then i would go over to acts 4 12 and you know i mean it, it, you, you start preaching from these verses and you know you, you look at Peter and he's preaching and then he says neither is there salvation verse 12 of chapter 4 of Acts neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved so remember we were talking earlier about words saved right so again I was guilty of preaching that and all the Plymouth brethren are guilty of this. They <clears> preach, <throat> we must be saved. But when you look at the context, what are they saved from? From the saved from unbelief and going mm -hmm. through the tribulation, well. right? Mm -hmm. And notice what they believe. Mm -hmm. The object of their belief is Jesus Christ and the name of Christ. And that's not the gospel for today. We have wow. to be very precise and that worries me about messianic jews you know they 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 come to their messiah and they're so excited and they they're even their families turn their backs on them because they're taking the name of jesus as messiah and it's almost like they're living in the book of acts when paul would go and preach to them and out of the scriptures would convince them that jesus was christ but as we learn in in Hebrew in uh, Galatians two, that they are now heathen, and they need to believe the gospel, as we said, the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the mystery. And uh, so, hopefully, those Messianic Jews, and you know, they're so excited because when they keep the Seder meal, I don't know if you have studied the Seder. The Passover meal, but I mean, I mean, it speaks vividly of of Christ, their Passover, right? 
And they're excited because they understand now Jesus is their Messiah and that he died for them. So hopefully, and I'm and I'm I'm hoping that the Messianic Jews who believe on Christ are believing the message of the gospel as well mm -hmm. that was given by Paul. Because don't forget, Paul says uh in in Romans, uh is it Romans 2 that Every, the secrets of men will be judged by my gospel the gospel of jesus christ so 16. anyway sorry uh, i just i wanted to throw that out there so. that's right thank you that help yeah, yeah so ernie what you're saying is they believe finally believe that jesus is their messiah and when they killed him that that oh that was who he was but they haven't gone any further than that they haven't believed the rest of the gospel yet well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just judging by, you know, I listen to a lot of their testimonies, one for Israel. If you go on YouTube, you can listen to them, you know, and they talk about, you know, I've come to know my Messiah, you know, and it's just Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. But, and they believe that he, they, he died for them, but they're worshiping him as the Messiah. I see. And I mean, I don't know. I can't speak to them. God knows. Right. But I'm just saying from their language. Mm -hmm. let's let's pray that they you know, you know they they get into paul's epistles and understand what they have believed so well, that's interesting well it's Thanks, pretty Bernie. clear though in paul's epistles that they are no longer under the law and those feast days are written in the law so they think with what it comes mm. anybody else Hey, Miss Catherine. You, you oh, hey. Well, hey. I I watched. <clears throat> I've told y'all before that Michael Rude guy who's a Messianic Jew, <laughs> and he has so many Messianic Jews on his program guests. And to me, they would they would never believe the gospel that that we now believe and that Eric oh. preaches that you all preach that we are dead in our body and it's just completely grace 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 they're very much still steeped in tradition and law from what i can tell okay mm. yeah mm. What I've seen. so they be they believe on the name of christ as messiah somehow but anyway thanks lenny thank y'all for having this, this oh, i'm so yeah. glad to and and also ernie great it's just wonderful thank you so much y'all Anybody else on Zoom? Everybody's good? When you were talking about Israel being on hold, Gil Brulee typed in there, Israel is in time out. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. That's where I'm on the two days. Thank you. Time out. Time out. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to thank you guys. It was a great study. Uh, I need to go eat dinner. So yeah, uh, we're allowed to talk. Let's go. Yeah. We're allowed to talk. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just, you. I'm the second stringer. Eric's the first string. You'll hear yeah, him yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> great, great study. Only thing oh, I thank, oh, my God. Only, only thing I wish I could be there with you to oh help enjoy God. that meal. Uh, enjoyed it, Ernie. Uh, uh, very good, and uh, all of y'all. Uh, uh, Adam's got something. Adam's got something he wants to show. Did you see it, Adam? Funny can't find happiness. Chicken. They raised chicken. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good weekend, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you, Clay. Right. Thank you, thank you. I will be you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. All right. Eric, do you want to say anything? We missed you, brother Eric. Hey, Eric. Yeah, come oh, on, Eric. Well, I've been I've been enjoying that both both what Ernie said and uh, Lenny said. I enjoyed both of that. I especially liked uh, what you mentioned, Ernie. Hebrews one one, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past into the fathers by the prophets you know that's a i think that's a good verse to show about right division and it's even for us after we've learned right division to understand that there are different phases to israel's program as well 
right, you know, right. that it says that he spoke in divers manners, then that's just talking about time past. Right. And, and that may be a good way of explaining to people in churchianity because their idea is that, um, well, God started something new when you get to the book of Matthew, that uh, we're under that because now he starts the water baptism. And, and so things are, well, yeah, it's, it's a new time, but it's not to us. It's just the at hand phase of the kingdom starts then. And so that's just a diver manner or a different manner that he speaks in time past to Israel. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I, I appreciate you sharing that, Ernie. I think that's a real good verse to sh show people that, uh, you know, show right division and also explain, well, why did, if, if Matthew isn't to us, then why did it change? Well, this is right. why it changed. It's just a, a diver manner in time past. So. Thanks, yeah. Ernie. Thanks, Ernie. And, and Lenny, what you did was great too. Yeah. I enjoyed it too. Lenny's great. Lenny and Eric are first stringer. I'm just second. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> well, we love now, all y'all. We yeah. love y'all. Wish y'all were getting ready to have some hot dogs and chili with us. Oh, I wish. All, all I'm getting tonight is a tomato sandwich. So. Oh, geez. <laughs> 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 uh, thanks again. Good night, everybody. Hey, Lisa, don't forget to stop the recording. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll say a quick <laughs> prayer and we'll go eat. Yeah. Father, we are so grateful for the uh, words spoken today by Ernie. We're so grateful that you wrote it down for us to have. So grateful for our little body growing up every day as we seek who you are. You tell us in your book who we are in you. And we can learn that each and every day. Hmm. So grateful for the fellowship. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. Oh, bye. I, bye. I didn't get to my main course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll do that next time. I didn't get to the And things, we're going to do things. Things are real interesting. <laughs>